Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. Our mission is to see a world well-led. And our strategy to get there? To empower leaders like you to lead every day. So let's get to work. How much is turnover costing your team, even your organization? It might be more than you think. Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. I'm Randy Gravitt. And I'm Mark Miller. And we're talking about turnover today, Mark. We've been we've been on these questions, these team questions that people have been submitting, and I love this question today. The question was how much or how does turnover impact the performance of, of our teams? And I, I think organizations all over the place they can measure turnover and we even had an organization hired us a few years ago that said it's costing us four thousand dollars every time a person leaves this position. Can you help us? And and we did help them, it was great. But you know, when you start thinking about it, it, a new uniform and training and all, they weren't even calculating what's it costing your executives that are having to hire these people over and over and the emotional stress and all that kind of stuff. I think there's a, I think there's a huge, uh, more than just the dollar figure cost when we lose people, it, it affects our teams. There's an emotional, it, there's cost, an emotional as well. cost as well. Sure. And, and we're going to dive into it a little bit today. So what, w- what do you what do you think about this? Like, what was it cost us when we have people just constantly, you know, over and over? We're turning turning our team over and over. Uh, what, what's the cost of that? Well, I, th- I think it costs performance. Now, turning over one person costs you less than turning over two or ten or a hundred or a thousand. Uh, I talked to an organization just recently, and they said their turnover was costing them $20 million a year. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so sure. But what they were not calculating was the impact on performance. Yeah. And so as much as possible, you need to reduce turnover. Now, that sounds like a pipe dream to a lot of leaders because turnover is part of your reality. Okay, so let's, let's talk to you since that's a lot of the people out there. If turnover is part of your reality, I think you've got to work to mitigate and minimize the impact of turnover. And so there there are a few strategies and tactics that we may want to jump into. So don't just accept it because we're trying to build a high-performance team. A critical element of that, as we've discussed, is talent, skills, and community. Those are are the, the components. So you bring somebody in they may or may not have all of the individual skills they need to excel in the role. Well, you can accelerate their development to help reduce that impact. Yeah. Let's talk about this a little bit um, uh, uh, when it comes to the world we live in. So it'd be easy for us to say we we live in a world where there's just going to be constant turnover. And I think uh, there's some truth to that. I don't want to, I don't want to minimize that. I mean, you and I are old enough. We grew up in a world where, go back to the sports world, there was no free agency when we were kids. I mean, you played for a team and that team played together. But think about what those teams were able to accomplish. You go back to those teams, the Celtics, and and even before our time, the Yankees of the 50s, and some of these teams that were that were together for a long time, the precision they played with, the performance. We do live in a different world now where everybody's a free agent and they can go where they want to. But I think when, when if I'm a leading an organization and I've got people on my team and I just say, well, turnover is going to happen, I think there's some things we can do to oh, stop there's, that. There's and certainly we wanna, we, things we don't you wanna, can do. I mean, that's not today's episode, but we, I want to remind you there are some things you can do to put in place to that are that's a retention yeah. you know, a, a yeah. play, not just a, a, an attraction play. There's some things you can do when you get there. But if you have this constant flux of turnover, your team can really struggle. And I know uh, you, you've got a story, Mark, where a, a guy – a few years ago, called you, and I think his words were, our team's not clicking, what's going on? And tell that story, because I thought that was so fascinating. Yeah. Um, he said, our, our team's not clicking. And I said, well, was it ever? And he said, yes. He said, it used to be clicking. And I said, so what's the problem? He said, they're not clicking now. And I said, what changed? And he said, well, nothing changed. I said, well, something changed. He said, no, nothing changed. I said, no, they were clicking, and now they're not. So something has changed. We went through this little, you know, comedy routine of me asking him. <laughs> Who's on first? What's yeah. changed? Nothing's changed. They were clicking. They're not clicking back and forth. And I just pressed and pressed and pressed. And I said, no, something had to change. And he finally said, well, we have two new members on our leadership team. Mm. I said, two of five? He said, yeah. That's 40%. I said, something for- just changed. <laughs> yeah. I said, "Here's here. think of it this way. You've now invited two strangers around your dinner table. Yeah. 
They don't know you. They don't know the other teammates. I mentioned earlier, maybe they don't have the, the necessary individual skills. Mm. Maybe they don't have the team skills. They don't know how you guys set goals or solve problems or resolve conflict. And they are certainly, even if they brought those skills, individual and team skills, yeah. they certainly are not yet part of your community. Remember, yeah. the cornerstone of community is knowing and being known. Yeah. Well, you don't know them and they don't know you. They've not given you an opportunity to serve them and they've not had a chance to serve you and so forth and so on. And so when I say we can minimize the effects of turnover, what I suggested to that leader, and I would suggest to any of you who find new people around your table, mm -hmm. is abandon the 75% performance management for a season yeah. and over-index on community building. Yeah, it's, it's so important. Help those people get up to speed more quickly, again, you might invoke, uh, devote an entire meeting. You might plan an outing, like yeah. you mentioned, for the sole purpose of helping people become grafted into your community. Now, it's still, commu it's still cumulative over time, yeah. but over-index there if you've got new people so that they can get up to speed more quickly. Yeah, I love that language. That's, that's so good. And, and we've got people who are listening who have adopted kids, you know, and if you... I mean, just think about it. Let's say you have you have some kids. My wife and I, we have four kids. If we adopt a couple more kids and we brought those to our table, that, that's that's going to take. I mean, we got we got four kids that that have grown up in our world for ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. They're grown and gone now. I mean, imagine the 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 just the change of of that whole thing if you bring a couple more in. Well, let's think about it with some of these businesses that we work with. We got organizations we work with who are. They've 10xed over the last 20 years. I mean, think about how, how much Chick Fil A grew. You know, when you were working there, and we, I, I know a specific company we worked with for the last nearly decade, and they tripled their business. And when I say tripled their business, their revenues tripled, but their leaders have tripled. I mean, we we've been working with their leaders, and they started out they had a couple hundred leaders. Now they got 600 plus leaders in this organization. If you're in a growing company right now, and you've been going at it for a while. You may have new kids at the kitchen table, and you're going, "What's not? What? It just doesn't." Why aren't they? And clicking? I hear this all the time. It doesn't feel like it used to, and you can't, you can't um, stand behind the excuse of, you know, we we were all around when it started, and it was nice, and everybody knew each other. I mean, you can you can say that, but there's no reason you can't have that now with more people. If you if you make the decision like we've been talking about to build community with more people, it really can happen, and then you can have an organization that can be. I mean, it, it's staggering what can happen if you get that going at that level. So I love this language of you've got new kids at the kitchen table, kind of, so to speak. And, and if that's happening, that might be one of the, the problems that are, are one of the cost of your turnover on your team. It, it really is. Anything else you got there, Mark, you think about when you, how does turnover impact the performance of the team? Well, any, I, any I'll thought? just reiterate something you said earlier, and, and we need to do probably an entire episode on retention, but don't accept turnover. As, as the standard. I mean, uh, it inevitable. may be the standard today, and I don't want you to de deny reality, but how much time, energy, and effort have you given? How much has your team focused on? What could we do to get 5 or 10 or 15 or 20% greater retention? I think you'd be shocked at what it might do for your organization. I, I was just talking to an owner of a company last week who who's a listener of the show. He'll he'll love the shout out here. But he he just saw he he built a company and he sold the company to a national company that does what he did. And and I asked him, why did they why did they buy you? Like, what was the deal? And he said it was our turnover rate. And I'm like, okay, they bought you because they of your got turnover you. Rate? And here's what he said. He said our industry has over a hundred percent turnover nationwide. He said our our retention or our turnover rate was twenty percent, which in the and what he does it's like staggering. But here's what he I, I loved what he said. He said the reason it was twenty percent is he said because I focused on creating the stuff we've been talking about. He, and he said it literally they didn't want to leave. They hated it when we sold the company. They just, yeah. He said that was that was the one thing that made me not want to sell the company. It was because I, I didn't yeah. know what was going to happen. Everybody. And so I love that I love that decision that a yeah. leader made to say. This is not going to be something that it, it may be inevitable at some level, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna 
make that my excuse. Right. For Don't not... let the industry average no. be your aspiration. No, exactly. That's not. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not good. Who wants to be average? Yeah, and I know we're drifting into a, a segment here on retention, but I'll give you one more thought to ponder. I believe retention begins with selection. Like, how much time and energy and effort are you investing to be sure that you get folks who are a good fit from the beginning? Yeah, that's great. That's great. All right, we'll leave it there. We'll continue these team questions uh, next few days. We got we got a few more here that you've submitted, and we want to we want to honor that and, uh, and and speak into that as best we can. We hope you'll continue to do the very best job you can to build a world class team. The world needs better teams. I believe that, and I think you can do your part. Make sure your team is is elite. That's that's our goal for you here. We we dream of a world well led. Remember, the best leaders lead every day. <laughs>